Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 6, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Antonio, Texas. Well, looks like we have a new attack against WPA and WPA2. This latest attack comes from Jens Stoibe, the creator of Hashcat. Not everybody using WPA is vulnerable. This particular issue does require that a specific feature is enabled with WPA and this feature is typically associated with fast roaming. Now, there's still not a lot of details about this particular attack. Really, all we have is that Jens captured this frame with this particular WPA option and then used it to derive the pairwise master key and then, of course, use that with Hashcat to brute force the passphrase. But in short, what's happening here is that the access point advertises a pairwise master key ID. Now, the idea behind this feature is that if you keep switching between a couple different access points as you're roaming in a larger wireless network, then when you're getting back to a prior access point, well, this prior access point will basically tell you I cached our keys and it's still good to go. And that's really what the fast roaming part here is all about. Uh, we are trying to make it faster to reconnect to the access point without having to renegotiate all of these keys. But the problem here is that in order to implement this feature, they're including this pairwise master key ID and to calculate it, the only thing they do is they take the key itself and then they hash it using a SHA-1 HMAC hash. And as key, they're essentially just using the client and the access point MAC address. So this makes it trivial to then get to the pairwise master key, which then is the starting point for the brute force attack. Now the brute force attack is not simple. The hash actually requires 4,096 iterations of PDKDF2, which is not a very fast hash to calculate. But in the end, you're back to relying on strong passwords, which we know is always dangerous. So recommendations so far, I think the best thing to start out with is make sure you use a large hard to guess password for WPA. Now, overall WPA, WPA2 by itself is really not recommended. You should do something like even TLS in order to secure it better. Of course, that's not necessarily an option for a home network. If you do see any options in your wireless gear that relate to fast roaming and credential caching, well, uh, definitely turn this part off. It really only helps you as you're roaming back to an access point that you connected to before. So it doesn't really help you in the connect away mode. And doesn't appear that all fast roaming implementations do use this particular feature. Have seen some test results for some of the ubiquitous with the Unify equipment, and that apparently does not use this particular option. And finally, let's hope that WPA3 comes out soon, uh, because this will hopefully get rid of sort of some of these fundamental problems in WPA2. But let's switch to a less technical attack. Symantec has a nice write-up about how some of the tech support scams are actually taking advantage of some of the same techniques that you're seeing in usual legitimate tech support systems. One particular trick they appear to be playing is that they're trying to profile the browser the user is using to figure out what language the user is speaking and then also what country the user is from. And then they offer a toll-free number that first of all works in the country the user is located in and secondly offers assistance in a language that the user speaks. And Hewlett Packard fixed two vulnerabilities in its printers that can lead to arbitrary remote code execution if a user prints a malicious file. Both vulnerabilities have a score of 9.8, so they're both critical. 
This could, of course, be a particular problem for any printers that do not require any authentication before printing or printers that you typically have in like guest setups and the like. HP states that over 200 different models are affected by this vulnerability. So, so I think that's just a good opportunity to check your printers, even if they're not HP printers, uh, if their firmware is up to date. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.